Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Spin Retro. Due to many people's requests, I'll be showing you how to expand the SD storage and also put the ROMs inside the SD card. So let's say you have received this device and it comes with the original SD card and you want to expand that storage to let's say 256 gigabyte of just order a new SD card and have it ready on the side. You want to copy all the contents from the original SD card and put it to your PC. And once you have all those contents copied over to the PC, copy all those and put that to the new SD card. So here's how to do it. USB-C cable should come with the device. And when you plug it, let's change the mouse mode, slide the not notification bar, click USB for charging, and change that to file transfer. So if you do that, and let me change the ISO settings so you can see my computer screen, you're gonna see this mobile device showing up. As you can see, you're only going to see the internal storage and we want to access the SD card, so this is not good. What you want to do is, instead of, instead of plugging the USB-C, let's adjust the screen brightness. So take the SD card out, but let's assume that this is the original SD card. So you might need to get a USB-C hub or anything that, that you can stick your SD card into. And then I'm going to plug this to my PC. So as you can see, you can see this. And let's just assume that this was the original SD card and it should look very similar. So it's going to come with the games folder, GPSP folder, RetroArch, ROMs wallpaper. And what you want to focus is the ROMs folder. <clears throat> so if you look at the contents in games, this is where your all your pre-installed ROMs are going to be. So if you go to the data folder, these may look gibberish to you. These are encrypted ROMs file. So you need to have this in order to play the pre-installed ROMs. So that's why we need to copy all these content and move it over to the new SD card so we can act, you can still access these pre-installed ROMs in the new SD card. Without these, you're not going to be able, able to access the Retroid Pocket app, nor all the pre-installed ROMs. So you're going to copy all this. Uh, click copy and we'll drop it in the downloads folder and click paste. Now I'm not going to do that uh, because I've already done it. So now plug in your new SD card. And now let's assume that this is the new SD card. With the contents that you already copied, you want to paste it in here so that your SD card looks exactly like this. Now we're going to try putting in some ROMs into your new SD card. So let's assume that these are the ROMs that you want to add. These are GBA ROMs. Go ahead, copy them. And we're gonna move over to our ROMs. And, and you just have to paste it here. Now I already have these ROMs already into this folder, so that's why it's detecting that they're um, there are ROMs already available. I'm gonna skip these files. So I just put several ROMs into GBA folder and you can go ahead and put more ROMs in GBC for Game Boy Color, um, Game Gear, N64, Neo Geo, and etc. So once you have put the ROMs in here, now you're done. So I'm gonna take the SD card out, the SD card in, let me close this laptop. Okay, now that the SD card is in,
you can check and click the SD card and see all the content. Go to the ROMs folder. Check my GBA folder. Now the files are in here. So let's go ahead and find these ROMs in RetroArch. Oh, well, not this RetroArch for GBA. Uh, for GBA, you want to be using this older version of RetroArch. I mentioned why you're using the older GP, uh, RetroArch, and that's because it's using the GPSP core that you can only use in this version of RetroArch. So, let's use load content. And to locate where the SD card is, um, it's going to be inside storage folder name SD card one. This is going to be same for all emulators. If you want to find your SD card, it's going to be inside the root under storage folder under SD card one. Okay, SD card one, and these are all your familiar folders. Under ROMs, I'm going to go to GBA. And there you go. Now, when you first launch um, any games on RetroArch, there is really no way to exit to the menu. So you need to configure that first. So let's close that app by holding down select. Remove that and then let's reopen that. Reopen the emulator. So go to the second column, go to input. Go to input hotkey binds and go all the way down where it says menu toggle and hold a key that you want to bind to. So I'm binding it to uh, L trigger. And and once you have done that, you you have to go to configurations and save current configuration. If you don't do that, all the settings that you, you've done to this emulator doesn't get saved, even if you exit them. So make sure that you, once you change any settings from the RetroArch, make sure you click save current configuration. Now, if you don't wanna you know, worry about all these configurations and setting, uh, RetroArch, it might be a little hard for a beginner to use. If you don't want to use that, then you can use MyBoy emulator or GBA.MU, which is my preferred emulator. You just go to load games and locate the GBA folder. And just, uh, just open the ROMs that way. I'll do another one using PPSPP. Okay, that's the internal storage. So what you want to do is click the arrow to go to the root. Arrow again. Now we're at the root. And at the root, you want to look for SD card 1. Go to ROMs and find the folder you put your PSP ROMs in. And there you go. So 
So maybe we can try kill zone. If you want to know how to set up PSP configuration, look for my PSP emulation test video. So this game, I know it's unplayable, but we're using this as an example. Okay, that's horrible. So let's uh, <laughs> exit out. So there you have it. You have all the ROMs into the new SD card, and this is how you access them. You pin 2 if you want to access the ROMs, just click refresh ROMs, and it'll try to find the ROMs I already configured to look into S storage under SD card 1, under ROMs under N64, so you just have to ro locate that and click OK here. Oops, I think I clicked B instead. Hit OK. And it'll scan through all these files and Put the thumbnail, picture, and all the games listed here. So that pretty much covers it. If you have any questions regarding how to put the ROMs into SD card, uh, leave in the comments below. Uh, for the next guide, I'll show you how to download ROMs straight to Retroid Pocket 2 without using the PC. So stay tuned for that video and as always, thank you for watching, bye.